in yourself just because somebody in your life doesn't believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know what you do, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. today's vocabulary stretcher version of English Live. So today we're going to be looking at um, some really interesting words and seeing if we can learn to use those in our everyday language. And there's a few little um, tasks for you to do that might get you thinking about the meanings of words and seeing if you can come up with your own definitions. But before we get started on that, a few things first. So if you are new to English Live, is it here we have it uh you will be able to download or anybody can download them but if you're new you might not know this you can download one of these pdfs with six different tasks that relate to today's lesson that will extend and consolidate your learning and these can be found on my facebook group which is english live resources or if you're watching these in the future um they may be available on my website instead um, there are six different tasks and they are given a different colour of the rainbow. They're not specifically aimed at any particular age or key stage, um, but more so at different learning styles and different things that might motivate um, different learners. So you can pick one or all or the purple or the red or whatever suits you, okay? And once you've finished your follow-up follow -up tasks, you can always take photographs of your work or video, any of the activities that you're doing, and you can also put them in that Facebook group. And um, it's a really good way to share your work. And I try and get around every evening and leave some comments and feedback, but it's also really nice to see you all leaving feedback on each other's work too. <coughs> right, a few hellos today. Quite a few. The chat just goes absolutely crazy. Um, Lots of people saying they've got their dogs with them watching the lesson. I keep saying we're going to be creating a generation of super clever dogs, aren't we? <laughs> so uh, hello to Sophie, who is eight, to Bunny's granddaughter, Lissy, who is watching for the first time. Lissy, I hope you really enjoy the lesson today and that you join us for all of them to come. Hello to Ava, who is 10, who is in Blackheath. Hello to Harry, who is nine, who's watching with Billy the dog. Hello, Billy. Uh, shout out to Archie, who is eight in Watford, who joins every single lesson. That's really good work. Well done, Archie. 
Hello to Reese in North Wales, who wants to say hello to his mum because she's an NHS worker. So a massive hello and thank you to your mum, Reese. That's wonderful. And shout out to Wilbur. Hello to Annie, who is eight in Derby, uh, who yesterday wrote a beautiful letter to the Queen, persuading the Queen to give an award to the NHS workers. So well done for using the persuasive techniques that you picked up in yesterday's lesson. And finally, hello to Harriet in Harrogate. OK, so our first batch of hellos are out of the way and uh, it's time to move on to our starter activity. So today, it's a bit different from what we usually do. I am going to ask you to come up with addition and a, a definition for these two words. You can um, come up with an accurate definition if you know what the word means, or you can have a look at the word, think, what does it mean? And come up with your own wacky definition for it. So we've got psychophant and cacophony. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to do this. You can write it down or discuss it with your siblings or your adult or just shout it out at the screen, whatever suits you. Okay, off you go. Play. <laughs> of those words? Well, I'll tell you what they mean and you can see how close you were and, and whether you think you came up with a, a, an accurate or just fun, wacky definition. So um, a psychophant is somebody who um, gains power by flattering very important people. 
okay? Um, and, uh, and cacophony means uh, lots of really harsh, clunky noises all at once. So if you imagine a toy box being tipped upside down, as I'm sure lots of parents, uh, a bit like me, have had that noise ringing in their ears <laughs> daily now for five or six weeks, um, that is uh, cacophony. Okay, let's move on. But first of all, hello to Ted, who is 10, who is joining for the second lesson today. So Ted, I obviously did something right, if you've come back for a second. And happy 10th birthday to Hannes in Shropshire. Hope you have a lovely day. So we're going to move on. I did ask in the comments, just before we started, do you know what the word elucidate means? OK, now the words that we come up with, well, the words that I share with you today, I would love it if you could try and incorporate them in the conversations that you're having um, with your family at home or over FaceTime or Zoom with your friends and relatives and really start to sound like you really know your stuff. OK, so elucidate. It means to explain something with clarity so it makes something sound really clear and hopefully that's something that I'm doing for you in terms of your English lessons um, but hopefully it's something I can do today in regards to the different vocabulary we're going to look at. Now elucidate is a verb so like explain would be a verb um, but it also has different forms as well so it's just something I wanted to point out to you that um, words are modified to suit what word class they fall into. So we've got um, elucidative, which is um, an adjective, um, elucidate, elucidator, which is a noun, I'm dipping my head around trying to see these, and um, elucidatory, which is also an adjective. So um, you could use that word in different forms, okay? So um, really quickly, I would like you to turn to somebody in the house where you can shout out at the screen whilst I'm getting the next sheet ready. Can you try and use this word in a sentence or in a question even better, okay? Have a go. Okay, did you have a go? Can you use it? Elucidate. Okay, really try and use that throughout the day. Right, now I'm gonna move on to our next task. So I often talk about synonyms and I talk about not using boring words like said or big or warped or small or nice, um, because there are far better words out there. I mean, a dictionary and a thesaurus is going to be your best friend in terms of improving the quality of your spoken and written English. Um, but I want us to look at this very short little sentence. The learners felt hopeful about their future. Probably shouldn't have a capital letter there because it's mid sentence. So I'm gonna correct my own work here. We all make mistakes, it is live. Okay, should be a lowercase one like that, okay. <laughs> Hopeful is an adjective. It's not a boring word, but there are lots of alternatives that you could use. So I'm going to give you about a minute with your people at home or shout out at the screen or jot down your ideas. You can do it as a brainstorm. Can you think of any other words that are similar to the meaning of hopeful or the same meaning that you could put in its place in this particular sentence? OK, I'll give you some examples afterwards. We'll see whether you got the same ones that I did. Um, but see if you can really go to the dusty, dark corners of your vocabulary vaults and um, find a more interesting alternative. OK, off you go. Play.
wait for their affirmation. You can't wait for their approval. You can't wait for their support. Sometimes you just gotta run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to pause. Okay, looking in the uh, the comments, some of you confident, that's a really good one, optimistic, fantastic, some really good ideas in there. And I've seen a few of you that um, have put some antonyms in there, so words that have the opposite meaning of hopeful. That's not what the task is, but I'm, I'm glad that you're experimenting with different vocabulary, that's fantastic. So these are the ones that I came up with before the lesson. Give yourself a pat on the back if you've got any that are the, the same as mine. So optimistic, confident, positive, buoyant, um, sanguine, bullish, assured, and upbeat. Okay, full selection of words there. You might want to quickly jot a few down um, and see whether you can use them throughout the day. Uh, let's use lots of um, hopeful language in the conversations that we're having today. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit now about this word, sanguine. Okay. This one just here. So make sure you've jotted that down so um, you can make notes around it. So I've put the definition here. It's an adjective. And it means optimistic or positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. I think this word, it really is relevant for how uh, we're all feeling at the moment or how we're trying to feel um, in the situation that we've found ourselves in. Um, but it also has other meanings, too. So it's really important when you're experimenting with new vocabulary to check out the alternative meanings it may have. OK, because. Um, the, the word will have connotations, so it will have links to other meanings. And if you're using it, the other person might think first of the other meaning rather than the one that you mean. So the other meanings for this word mean blood red or bloodthirsty or a ruddy complexion. So, you know, those bright red cheeks, for example. OK, so what I'm going to ask you to do now, I'm just going to give you a minute. It shouldn't take too long. I'm going to ask you to use this word in a sentence. OK, I want you to write down a sentence. And if you're a quick finisher or if you're really good at vocabulary and writing, then um, try and use it in two or three sentences, but with its different meanings. OK. You ready? OK, off you go. Alexa, play. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life will chase you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. I'm going to do a few hellos. 
So if you're just finishing off your sentences, just stick with that for a moment. Um, I know we've got learners in a wide range of abilities and ages, and some of you get your tasks done really quickly, and some of you need a little bit more time. So uh, we'll try and do what works for everybody. So uh, hello to Henry and Thomas again, who watch every day. I'm so glad that you're joining. Hello to Charlie King in Cornwall to Felicity and Daisy in Winchester, hello. And a shout out to Claire and Sophie in Scotland, to Nemi in Essex, to Amelia in High Wycombe, to Tommy in Reading, who is watching for the first time. Tommy, I hope you enjoy the lesson and I hope you come and join in again tomorrow and on Friday. And um, hello and thank you to Paul Bowen, who says that he really loves my lessons. Well, I love teaching all of you. It's an absolute pleasure to do this at 11 a.m. every weekday. Okay, so you should now have um, at least one, but maybe a few sentences that use this word. Okay, now we're gonna move on to another word and do a similar type of task. What time is it? Okay, we've got time, this is good. We're gonna squeeze in a few more interesting words today. So conciliatory, intended or likely to placate or pacify, okay, even the words in the definition are quite complicated, aren't they? So this means, um, this is an adjective to describe something that might calm a situation down and might um, bring two different opposing sides together um, and might um, build bridges, okay, rather than create arguments. So if you've got a younger brother or sister or an older brother or sister at home, you might actually find that you could probably drop this word into some conversations um, over the next few days if you're all bickering with each other a little bit. Um, try and be as conciliatory as possible. So um, I've also included here what the antonym of um, the word is, and that's antagonistic. OK, so to antagonize something, that's the verb version of it. So showing or feeling active opposition or hostility. So you need to be changing your antag antagonistic attitudes into conciliatory ones. And I'm going to ask you to do one sentence for each word. As always, you can shout it out at the screen. You can type it into the live chat. You can just discuss it with your um, family that are also in the room with you, hopefully. Um, or you can just jot it down, completely up to you. But have a go at using these words in a sentence. OK, you ready? I'm going to give you about a minute and a half for this one. Off you go. Play. <laughs> You can't wait on their affirmation. You can't wait on their approval. You can't 
wait for their support. Sometimes you just gotta run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run, but I can't stop running because you're not running. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life will chase you. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life will believe in you. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know you can do it, you're gonna have to do it all by yourself. Okay, Fab, some fantastic examples coming up in the live chat. And all of the ones that I've seen are people that are using the word properly. So that's fantastic. If you're using that word properly, that is new vocabulary that you've got banked in your word vaults um, and you can rock it out whenever and sound um, really impressive. Okay, sound really like you know what you're talking about. So um, I'm just gonna have to have a tiny little moan and just ask, uh, please, can you keep your comments in the live chat related to uh, this lesson or to shout outs? Um, I have had to remove the live chat function from some people that tune into the lessons. And um, if if it continues, I'll have to remove it from more of you and I, I would hate to do that, okay? So please keep it focused. Thank you. Right, so uh, another task, let's move on. So I've got three words here, okay? They all mean different things. I'm gonna give you the definition and then a short task to do, which will probably bring us to the end of the lesson today. So three new words. You may know what some of these words mean, okay? Especially if you're a bit of a word freak like I am. So malaise, malaise is a noun because it's a feeling. It's a feeling of, of being under the weather, okay? When you just feel a bit run down and a bit unwell, um, you experience a feeling of malaise, okay? Uh, scintillating just means fantastic and interesting, okay? Fantastically interesting is what scintillating means, okay? And uh, perfunctory means um, without much effort, okay? So um, just a casual attempt at something. So I, are, I am not giving you the definitions on the board because I'm hoping that you're listening into the lesson and uh, you're remembering these things, you're getting your brains moving around. I'm gonna ask you now to write a sentence that includes all three of these words. If that feels like it's a bit too much for you to do, you can do a sentence that includes one of the words or two of the words, it's completely up to you, or three separate sentences. But if you can, try and push yourself to use all three of them, okay? Get that practice in. So I'm gonna give you two minutes for this. Pop it in the live chat, talk about it, however it works for you, okay? Off you go. Play. Thank you. 
Okay, lots of you got on really well with that. The ones that I'm seeing in the live chat are fantastic. Um, well done to those of you that did accurately manage to use all three of them. Um, a reminder though, that try and use the words um, in their correct form. So um, malaise is a noun, um, scintillating is an adjective and perfunctory is an adjective. And um, if you use them in that way, then you've got a much better chance of using them accurately. OK, um, but just to clarify one more time, malaise means a feeling of, un of being unwell. Scintillating means fantastically exciting and um, perfunctory means without much effort. OK, so a few hellos. So um, a big hello to Robbie and Stephen in Tanzania, to Ola, who is nine, to Charlie Hilton, who wants to say hello to his mum. Hello, mum of Charlie Hilton, um, to William in Kent to James, who is here for his first lesson. Hope you're loving it, James. Hello to Rory in Scotland and to Chloe in London. I hope that you've all really enjoyed this lesson today. So we have come to the end, sadly. Um, I know Bertie the dog normally comes and says a big hello, but he's in a deep sleep over there. Um, and I've had to plug a lead in to keep the, um, <laughs> the web, the, webcam running so I'm not going to risk going over that to wake him up but I will show you um, a picture that <laughs> we had done of Bertie I hope you would like this um, just showing how regal he is um, and I think this would tie in really nicely with um, one of the learners yesterday who for their persuasive writing task um, wrote to Boris Johnson suggesting that um, Bertie should be on the plinth um, just like I did. So, yeah, we could imagine a statue of this. Right. Um, a reminder, if you missed the end of the lesson, you can download this PDF document with the six tasks to help you extend and consolidate your learning from today's short uh, lesson. And if you are up at key stage three or key stage four, or if you've got key stage four siblings, uh, at half past three today, I'm going to do a special live lesson that addresses the AQA uh, English language GCSE paper one question three which is looking at structure you're very welcome to join have a go even if you're you haven't started any GCSE work it might be tricky but uh, challenging yourself is always a great thing what you will need to do for anybody who's participating you will need to download an extract put it here uh, it's in the usual place and um, make sure you've had a little read through first because we'll be talking about how this extract is structured on the page and how to answer that exam question to maximise your marks. So, end of the lesson. Thank you very much for joining me today. Tomorrow we have Writing Important Letters, which is for Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 2, but Key Stage 3, you're welcome to join. And on Friday we have the Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 4 for everyone spellathon. So do get your aunts and uncles and grandparents and everybody involved in that too. Okay. Have a lovely afternoon. Good luck with your tasks and I will see you tomorrow. Play. <laughs>